it's one of the ways that God enables us to be able to see him more clearly. We, we cannot, to, to, the light is very bright, and, and until the, the, you know, the darknesses in us are, are gradually purged out of our, our lives, we have to undergo this, this difficulty. It's part of bearing the cross. Now, the second question about uh, consecrated virginity you know that that for about 1700 years of the 2000 year history of the church that for the most part uh the 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 sanctioned the blessed expression of of the celibate life has been for people to to uh do it in communities uh that that uh and those communities of course are called monasteries as you know that and and that remains the, but but you notice in this talk tonight that i have not I, and and it's intentional i have not spoken of marriage and monasticism i've spoken of marriage and and virginity or consecrated virginity because although although monasticism is is the principal expression of of, of the virginal life and and we could say uh, in in response to the to the witness of the church it is the preferred one because it, it is within the community submission to to one another in the community and and and, and simply the the strength of of following this this way uh th this this way of life in communion with others that and being able with those others to to live you know the the live the words of the scripture that we 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 know that we have passed to, from death to life because we have because of our love for the brethren well you got to have brethren to love if you're going to do that so uh but that does not mean that it is the only expression after all uh, it wasn't around for the first 300 years of the church you know uh uh, uh on on sunday uh, when when at matins we do the prayer of intercession where where you know what well, the names of all of uh, saints i guess i guess i'm up to a Antioch, Polycarp, Smyrna, Irenaeus of Lyon, Cyprian of Carthage, Athanasius, Basil, Gregory, and John, uh, Leo and Gregory of Rome, the two Cyrils, Ambrose, Augustine, Patrick, all that, you know. Well, it's interesting to look at those great pastoral figures uh, in, in, in the early church, because they're primarily in the early church. And uh, first of all, of that group, only a couple of them uh, had, had any connection with monastic communities. Uh, Augustine did, uh, and and Basil, Basil the Great, and and Gregory the theologian did, but only for a little while. Uh, the rest of them didn't have any, and they were all they were all celibates. You see, it's interesting. All of them in that list. So uh, even though sometimes sometimes the case is made. I've had to answer. I've had to answer this. Not so much in this country, but but in other places. In this country, people don't think of it much, mainly because the monastic witness has been so weak. But you know, for a long time in the Orthodox Church, uh, pretty much automatically, uh, if if a person was uh, if a celibate priests did not, they did not serve parishes. They were in, they were in monasteries, and that that became almost institutionalized. To uh, the point where where people would say that that in the Orthodox Church you can still hear this said in some circles there should be no such thing as as uh, celibate priests all priests that serve parishes should be married and and the celibate should be in monastic communities. Well, it's not a bad idea for for the celibates to be in mass monastic communities. That's for sure. But I would. I would uh, ask the question, uh, justifying my own existence at the present time, you know, then, then what do we do with, with Ignatius, Polycarp, uh, Irenaeus, Basil, Gregory, John, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Does that mean that, that, that they were, uh, not that I'm comparing myself to them, but, but I think that, what, I use that as an illustration because we must not, I don't think, uh, institutionalize monasticism to the point where it becomes the only framework in which one can live the the consecrated life of virginity after all uh that life is is if it, if it is what it what it is supposed to be I, I i see i believe myself that that it can be lived in the world 
that's not a popular idea. Some people, oh, it's so hard. You'll never be able to do it. The temptations are so great. You have to be in a community uh, part somewhere or it's just impossible. I don't buy it. So I think, I, I think it's hard everywhere, and I think marriage is hard everywhere. <laughs> I think it's all hard. Anyways, <laughs> uh, go. I think uh, na- yes, yes. There are there are particular temptations for celibates living in the world. Yes, of course there are. But there are also particular temptations for for celibates living in communities, and there are particular temptations for married people living in the city, and there are particular temptations for married people living in the country. And it's, you know. So, I don't know, that's just some, does, it doesn't exhaust your questions, but. I think um, one, one aspect of that question, which I may, I may make clear, uh, it would seem to me that being in, in, in a monastery would provide you with, provide whoever with uh, a form of discipline mm-hmm. that would sort of help to I don't know. It just seems to me that you know temptations can be very great, and the idea that you could be under somebody's rule. Oh, without you know, question. Be very yeah. Helpful. Yeah, that's that's certainly the tradition of the church, and I, I I'm not meaning to to disagree with that at all. Heavens, no. I all, all I would say is is that it is not the only way. It's it, it is it is a rule, but a rule that does not it it, it admits of exceptions. I'd say the best thing for, for someone, someone to do to, uh, uh, I, you know, what I wish I had brought, because it, I would want to read this verbatim. I, I, I won't do justice to it, to it by uh, just trying to, to uh, paraphrase it, but, but I'll, well, maybe I'll try. It's uh, from the life of St. Siloan, you know, of, of Mount Athos, one of the great, uh, one of the great lights of, uh, of this century. And... Uh, he said at one point to to uh, Father Sofroni, his disciple, uh, who who wrote wrote this life. You know, Father Sofroni was the abbot of the monastery in in, uh, in England, who recently recently died. Uh, that he thought, and and here we have to remember that that uh, we're we're not to we're not to uh, make this, the, even the thoughts of the saints into infallible pronouncements. You know, they're, they're, but anyway. Saint Siloan thought that that in this twentieth century it was going to become uh, increasingly uh, that 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 the traditional monastic life that's existed in the church uh, for for uh, well more than well more than half its history was going to become increasingly less available to people. He thought so, and he said therefore it will be necessary for people to live that life in the world. So, so even someone who was formed by that life uh, gave gave the possibility uh, that that what perhaps is maybe because of the times we live, which uh, in which the church, uh, the society, the society around us does not support the, the church and the Christian way of life. Perhaps one of one of the effects that will take, especially in our Western world, of of uh, more uh, uh, of of not uh, of a life that that perhaps is more uh, patterned on on the early church. I here uh, see. I I have some thoughts about Christian communities, uh, but I don't want to. I'll just say one thing. I think that what and here. Here I'm, I'm kind of looking at Orthodox life in this country as, as I know it and as I, I've experienced it, not only here, but, but in many other places. I think what the Orthodox Church desperately needs is some way for people, married people, uh, unmarried people, to live the Christian life with, with some sort of, of expression of, of uh, community, and that means uh, being involved with one another, that is, on the one hand, different from uh, the average 
the average parish church in this country, which, uh, by the way, those of you who, who you know, we, we belong here, this is not an average parish church here. That doesn't mean that, that everything about us is, is, is wonderful and perfect, but it's not average. The reason why it's not average is that most of the Orthodox parishes in this country, by far, the people live uh, you know, over a, a large geographical area. They are generally together only at the Sunday liturgy, uh, and sometimes not even all of them then. There is often minimal involvement of, of people in, with, with each other. So, so, the, so the, the church, it, instead of being an actual uh, Christian community, is a place uh, that one goes to go to church and, and be part of, of you know, the, the body of Christ that assembles at this time. But, uh, but outside of the liturgical assembly, there is basically no other expression of the life of the church. That happens in many, many, many hundreds of, of parish churches. I don't think that that model of, of uh, church life uh, is going to be sufficient for people. I think they need something more than that. And what is more than that may not necessarily be what in the past in the Christian society was. You know, you had parish churches and then you had monasteries that people could go to pil uh, on pilgrimages to. So you had this, this balance of they both kind of fed each other, you know, kept each other going. I don't know if we're going to have that here. Uh, we, might, we might have some attempts at it, but it will take a very long time for those attempts to really have some roots to them. And in the meantime, I think what we need are, are uh, situations where people try in, in humility of heart to have, to have a, a closer and more intense life uh, in, in the presence of, of one another. Uh, that, that's, that is, of course, that's at the, at the root of what we try to do here, hopefully with, with some success and God having mercy on the failures of it. Um, but I, I would... I guess I'll make a, a bold statement that uh, I almost think that there is greater need for that in, in American orthodoxy now than, than for uh, trying to establish traditional monasteries. I know a lot of people wouldn't say that. They, they keep saying over and over and over again, the reason why, the reason why uh, American orthodoxy is so immature is we don't have the witness of the monastic life. I would agree with that. But, uh, you know, you just can't go out and, and uh, bring them into existence overnight uh, unless somebody's going to come along like St. Bernard. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of being a, a child of, of my own spiritual father in saying that. And that, well, you know, those of you who who know me uh, know that I that I have a great love for the monastic life, and 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 think that that perhaps someday that's where where I, I might belong. But there is the there is the other thing too. You see, when I look at my own life, I, I have to see that that to up to this point, and and. Uh, if, if I'm going to live the normal number of years, and I might not even live that because we never know, it's, it's over half done now. And, and, uh, and to, at the, to this point, God has not seen fit to, to, to give me that. He's given me something else. And uh, therefore, therefore I, I, have to see, I have to see his hand and his grace in that, too. Do you, do you know of any other sources? St. Ignatius Bryantianinov uh, had a kind of similar statement. He said that, that, uh, that the time will come when, uh, when those who, who, even, who struggle to do even a fraction, I'm paraphrasing, even a fraction of what, uh, of what the great saints did in times past will receive a greater reward from God. Because, because of the great difficulties and, and faithlessness of the times in which they live. So, you could apply it 
So. I, I, of course, I, I certainly hope for the establishment of monastic communities, uh, but I think that we got we got to be careful and and uh, not say that that uh, you know unless unless we have that we we somehow can't live the Christian life. That that that's the extreme that I that I I, I want to I want to caution myself and others against. Well, and there, there's I think there's some pressure. I don't know where from within our own country or from Orthodox abroad, there's this pressure put on people. Well, if you're not being married, then you're automatically in the monastery. No. I don't think it's good to address that issue. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? There's probably a lot of things that I should have said and didn't. But. Hope to have you again. <laughs> well, thanks for asking me to come.